If you have your Bibles this morning, and I hope you do, turn to the book of Matthew. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, and we're going to read verses 5 through 13. I probably won't get through with this message today. I'll try, but I probably won't. We have been doing a series, uh, started last week. And the series is entitled Breakthrough, and it's a series on faith. And so today we are going to do a message entitled Faith, the Motive for Prayer. Faith, the Motive for Prayer. Let's all stand, and we're going to read in the Word of God, verses 5 through 13. Now, I'm going to give you a little instruction. Everybody listening, say amen. Amen. When we get down to verse 9, the middle part of that verse, that's the Lord's Prayer, and we're going to say it together. Everybody hear me? We're going to say that together. And so um, don't forget that when we get there, we're going to say it together. The Bible says in verse 5, And when when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love pray, pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enterest, in, enter in to thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore pray ye. All right, here we go. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's thank the Lord for the reading of his word. Father. We love you today and we thank you for your precious word and we pray that you will intervene in this message, that your Holy Spirit will use this message to teach us about the faith and the motive of our prayer life. Forgive us of our sins and Father help us to be taught from your word today. Pray, Father, that you will give us something in this message that will touch our heart, even if it is something that you need to correct in our lives. Help us to leave here with a renewed word, vision for our life. In your precious, sweet name, we pray these things in the name of Jesus and all God's people said. Now, fellowship there just a little bit. Now, a minute ago, when I said something about 23 years, I didn't mean that I was 23 years old. I'm 22. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, in this series, what is our objective from this series? What, What are we looking for? Well, I think that in this series, I think the Lord wants us to step up in our faith. He wants us to step up as a church through our faith and as individuals through our faith, even our families. Faith that is unstoppable when it comes to spiritual things. God is the one who answers our prayers. God is the one who is all-powerful and all-knowing. He is the one that we serve, the one that 
lives in our heart through the Holy Spirit. So faith is the key that brings His power through our lives. And so I'm praying in this series that we're doing that we as a church and we as people and families will have a breakthrough that it won't be the same old, same old. Because I'm here to tell you folks that God has good things for you. He has great things for you. So in Matthew chapter 6, I know this probably is unusual to read this in a faith chapter, but in Matthew chapter 6 in verses 5 through 13, what you're looking at there is one of the most famous prayers in all the Bible. It is a prayer that a lot of people use and quote every day. And so I wanted to get into this and find out about our faith and what God is speaking of in this prayer that could help us in our faith walk. So I asked myself, you know, some questions before I even started with this message. And one of the questions was, and I'm not going to give it to you right now, but if I could talk to anybody in history, if I could go back hundreds of years and just talk to anybody in history and I thought, first of all, who would that be? Who would I want to talk to? If you Google this question I'm going to give you in just a moment, it has uh, outstanding uh, statistics in it. Uh, there are names of former presidents. There are great authors and, and great actors, and the list just goes on and on. Uh, athletes, and the question is, who would people want to talk to more than anyone else? Who would people, if you could go back to your most famous person, who would they want to talk to more than anyone else? You would think to yourself, well, it would be, you know, this or a queen or a king or a president. But at the top of that list is people would want to talk to God more than anyone else. Now I want you to think about that just for a moment in the society that we live in. Because it seems in our society that no one wants to talk to him anymore because no one really wants to live for him like they should anymore. And so Jesus teaches this prayer to the multitudes. He does this during the Sermon on the Mount and he instructs his people as he teaches them to practice fellowship with one another. By the way, folks, as Christians, we should be in fellowship with one another. How many believe that? As he teaches them to be in practice of fellowship with one another, he teaches them righteousness, and he teaches them about giving, and then he teaches them about prayer. What it means to have a prayer life. I think in our day and time that we do those 911 prayers. You know, when we're in trouble, we learn to pray. When something goes wrong in our lives, we're on our knees praying. When someone's sick, we're praying. But what are we doing the rest of the time? Do we have an active prayer life? Is there a time in your day that you get off by yourself and talk to God. Because folks, listen to me. That is your power, but not only that, that shows your faith in the one that you say is the King of kings and Lord of Lord of your life. A practice prayer life. Do you have that? Is there a time you can say every day that you get along with God? Because how many of you know this morning it is important? So in this, in this subject today, God is teaching these people, these multitudes and his disciples, how, first of all, he teaches them how to, and then he teaches them how to not pray for things and how not to pray in the wrong way. He teaches us what to pray for. He teaches us in this prayer, there's a lot in it, He teaches us in this prayer uh, why we should pray. And He gives us results of committed prayer. 
And I'm thankful today that I have a prayer life. I'm thankful today that I can talk to him. I don't have to go through a priest. I don't have to go through a pastor. I don't have to get somebody to do it for me. I can talk to him every day of my life, and heaven opens up. And God hears our prayers. And he loves us. So in saying all that, this prayer that we just read, these things, the first thing I want to talk about is the essentials of prayer. What is important when it comes to prayer? Before Jesus gives us this model prayer, he gives us some general instructions on, about prayer and how to pray. He gives us things that should not be part of our prayers. There's a lot of things you may be praying today in your prayer life that shouldn't be there. And then he gives us things that should be part of our prayers. Now, you need to listen this morning. It's very important that we understand how to pray. So, he talks about the manner in which we pray, our motive for prayer, and he teaches us that how we pray and why we pray can be more important than what we pray for. So, the first thing I want to talk about is the attitude of our prayers, the purity of our prayers and then we'll get on into the message. The first thing I want to talk about is prayers God rejects. Prayers God rejects. I want you to look there in verse 5 with me just for a moment. Of Matthew chapter 6 verse 5, prayers God rejects. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now go down to verse 7. Prayers God rejects. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So first of all, God is speaking to us and shows us the type of prayer we should avoid. And there is that type of prayer. The hypocrites. These are the ones whom Jesus speaks of that have convinced themselves that performing religious acts gets them to heaven. There's a lot of people like that. They think what they do gets them to heaven. You may be one of them here today. And I want you to know that even in these various acts that God is speaking here about prayers, the type of prayers they pray. They think the type of prayer, the words they use, the, the way they use it, that it gets to God. That God listens to them more than he does anyone else. Can I say something to you this morning? It's not the words that you use when you pray to God. It's the heart that God looks at when you pray to him. How's your heart? Because prayer is so important, then the first thing ought to be that our heart is right. Is your heart right before God this morning? What I mean by that, are you saved? Do you know Him? Do you have a personal relationship with Him? People today still deceive themselves into thinking they are Christians when all they have done is dressed up the old nature. <laughs> they have these religious trappings, you know. And they think that they're right with God and they stand before God with these vain words. And they really don't know God. Praying publicly. You see, some people think that the way they pray publicly gets them into God. Gets them right with God. 
And can I say to you this morning that it doesn't. If it's kind of prayer that it's not coming from your heart and not right before God, I'm here to tell you it doesn't go any farther than the ceiling here. You can pray till you're blue in the face and use all these big words and all these things, but if there's no heart that is right before God, it does you no good to even pray. It's got to be right. There has to be that faith issue in God that makes your heart right. By the way, God don't need you to tell Him what you need. He already knows what you need. A lot of times we spend most of our prayers, most of our time on our knees talking to God, telling Him what we want. God already knows what you need. He understands the needs of His people. He knows it before you even ask for it. So when I say that, you can ask for needs in your life, but you don't have to be so repetitious with it. A lot of times people fill their time up on their knees being repetitious when God already knows and there's no sense in being repetitious. He's a powerful God, He's a good God, and He answers our prayers. In this prayer that God speaks of, He says that just adding words to our prayers doesn't make them any more effective or powerful. I have heard some people pray, and I'm not making fun. Believe me, I'm not. I've heard some people pray that use such words that they don't even understand the words they're using. They just put them in there to sound good. The second thing, now let's look at prayers that God receives. How does God hear our prayers? Look at Matthew 6, 6. We're praying in faith. We're talking about the faith issue in our lives. We want to be closer to God. We want to be stronger, have more power with God through our faith. Well, here's how we do it. Prayers God receives. Look at Matthew 6, 6. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy... What? Read that with me. Pause it. You see, some people think that the things they do on the outside gets them to God. But God says this. He said, if you want to have prayers that are received by me, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closets, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret, read that with me, shall what? How many believe that? Say amen. Let's read it one more time because I really want you to believe it. If you want God to answer your prayers and prayers that God receives, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now I want to I correct one thing right here. It's not wrong to pray in public. It's not wrong to pray in an assembly like this. I don't want you to get that on your mind. Because some of you are already thinking that. It's not wrong to do that. It's not wrong to bless your food out in public. It's not wrong to bless your food at home. Because you're thankful for it. How many of you know if it didn't come from God, you wouldn't have it? So we ought to thank Him for the things He's done for us. It's not wrong to pray and seek God's help. But it is wrong to pray in public if we are not in the habit of praying in private. If we don't have a prayer life, I'm here to tell you right now, folks, if we don't have a prayer life at home, in our closet, wherever you pray at. If we don't have a prayer life at home, then we shouldn't be praying at church. Now, I know that's harsh. 
And I know that may hurt some of you, but it's the truth. It's the truth. And a lot of people, the only time they pray is when they come to church. People that observe may think, well, I, I, they're practicing prayer when they pray. But folks, what God says about that, if you don't have a private prayer life, it's hypocrisy. It's hypocritical. Is anybody with me or not? It's hypocritical. The word translated here, closet, is, it means room. It doesn't mean that you actually have to go into a closet and shut the door. It just means a room somewhere. Somewhere privately, somewhere where you can get on your knees. If I talk to some of you, some of you would say, it's at the foot of my bed. Some of you would say, I've got a chair in my room, and I pray right there. I bow down and pray right there. I remember when I was a little boy, and oh well, an 18-year-old man coming in, and my mama being at the foot of her bed praying. And my daddy would be at the table praying every morning. I remember it. It made an impression on my life. I'm here to ask you this morning, do you make that impression on your children? Do they see mama praying? Do they see daddy praying? Uh, grandmothers and grandfathers, does your grandchildren see you praying? We have kindly thrown it out the door. We say a quick prayer out the door. We say a quick prayer in the car, and don't close your eyes while you're doing that, but in the car. God says, go into your room in secret and pray. And I'm here to tell you this morning, if you want a life that is different than what you've got right now, if you want a family that loves the Lord, get in your room and pray. God will bless you. There is nothing like prayer. Go into your private chamber. And talk to the Lord privately. Praying from the heart with sincerity, humility, reverence to God. It is the avenue, it is the road to success in your Christian life. How many believe that? Jesus says that kind of prayer He'll hear. That kind of prayer He'll reward. That kind of prayer is communication with Him. And sometimes we need to be reminded that prayer is a wonderful privilege. I think we've forgotten about that. You go back to the Old Testament and you see how they had to get a prayer through. If you see how the priest had to go into the temple and pray, the holies of holies, and pray and seek God for the people outside. And if that priest had any sin, anything in his life, he died that quick. And they pulled him out by rope, dead. Because it was such an awesome thing, and it still is, to go before a heavenly Father. But we've forgotten how awesome that is. Now we can go right into the throne room of God. What Jesus did on the cross of Calvary when He died for our sins and He tore that veil in two of the temple. I'm here to tell you, a God that was saying, you stay out. Don't you come in here. If you come in here, I will kill you is now saying, come on in. Spend some time with me. I love you. That's the kind of God we serve. But we have taken advantage of our prayer life and we don't do it like we should. If we do it right, God will listen to your prayers. God will hear you from heaven. He will communicate with you through the Word. And sometimes we need to be reminded that prayer is wonderful. We need to be reminded that He listens to us. The God of heaven, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the rose of Sharon, the bright and morning star, all together lovely. He hears you. And He hears me. You ought to be overjoyed about that this morning. It's important to have a prayer life. 
The second thing I want to give you, and I won't get through with this, is the elements of prayer. Jesus did not give these prayers to us to be memorized and recited a number of times. Now, I know that may, that may make you mad, but he didn't. In fact, this prayer that we just read together, this prayer is to keep us from vain reputa- uh, reputations in our, in our talk, getting down and saying the same things all the time, repetitions. Jesus did not say, pray in these words. He said, pray after this manner. Use this pattern in your prayer life. But we think if we just say this prayer in the Bible that everything's okay. And it's all right to say this prayer. I'm not saying that. But don't be so repetitious. Use your own words. Use your heart. God knows your heart, but He wants you to know that you know your heart. So when we talk to Him... He didn't give us this prayer just to use it, you know, uh, all the time as a substitute for our real heart. You know this prayer is fewer than 70 words. It's a masterpiece. It's a, now listen to me. It's a masterpiece of the mind of God. He compressed every conceivable element of a true prayer in these words. In just this brief Summary of prayer, a simple form. It's a form that a young child can repeat. I remember as a child, I repeated this prayer all the time. But it's sometimes a, a prayer that older people don't really understand. And I really didn't understand all of it until I started looking at it and, and studying about it. You see... Jesus moves from giving the people the manner in which to pray and the motive for prayers we just talked about straight to the model of this prayer. And Jesus lists several aspects of the model of this prayer. I'm going to give you just a few of them this morning. And by the way, the model of this prayer will strengthen your prayer life. Everybody with me? Notice the first few elements. First of all, he talks about our faith. He says in verse 9, look at it just a moment. He says, our Father in heaven. The purpose of this prayer, the purpose of this prayer, and the purpose of our prayers is to glorify God's name. Our Father. He's my heavenly Father. He's a good father. He loves us. We need to recognize that. I think sometimes when we pray, we get on our knees and we start in on ourselves and start in on what we need and start in on why I didn't answer this prayer. The first, we need to recognize who he is and how wonderful he really is. It takes faith to recognize our father in heaven. It's to glorify His name. It's to ask for help also, but it's also to accomplish His will on this earth. Our Father's will for this earth and for the people of this earth is salvation. That is your job, to teach people about salvation. And a lot of times we're failing miserable in in our denominations and in our churches. We are failing miserable about telling people about Jesus, how wonderful He is. And I think the reason we're failing in that is because we've forgotten how wonderful He is. Our Father. Our Father. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I love my Father. My father died when he was 57. I about lived my father. And I loved him. But he's been gone for a long time. And I remember asking him about things when I first got married. Asking him how to do this. Asking him how to do that. I'd call him about every night or he called me. And we talked to each other. And just being a father and a son. 
that after my father on this earth died, my relationship with my father became so much more wonderful to me. Because everything I needed to know, I asked him about. Everything I wanted, I asked him about. But I start first by praising him for who he is in my life. We need to understand this morning how wonderful the father relationship is. Faith. Faith lets us know our father in heaven. Our prayers begin with God's interests, not ours. Our prayers begin with God's name. Our prayers begin with God's kingdom. Our prayers begin with God's will in our lives. If you need them later, I'll give them to you, but that's the way we ought to pray. The second thing and the last thing that he talks about is worship. He says, hallowed be thy name. So we look at the Father, first of all, and that's our faith, faith in the Father, putting all of our trust in the Father, recognizing who we are in the Father. But the second thing is worship. How's your worship? Has it become boring to you to come to church? Has it become boring to you to worship the Lord? How are you worshiping Him in your private life? People think that they have to come to church and hear singing and hear this to worship. Listen, folks, we ought to worship on our knees in front of the Father. When you bow and you get down before the Father, what you're doing is going into the throne room of God. Do you understand that? You're going into the throne room of God. You're going into the presence of a holy God when you pray with the right heart. What an awesome thing. Worship. Hallowed be your name. God's name here signifies infinitely more than his titles. It it represents his character. It, It represents, now this is important, it represents his character. It represents his plan for your life. It represents his will, not yours. A lot of times we get down on our knees and and, and we're we're going on our character. Well, God, I'm a pretty good fella. God, you ought to be answering my prayers. I go to church. God, you ought to do this for me because I teach a Sunday school class. God, you ought to do this for me because I've been a Christian for 40 years. God, instead of saying, God, you're everything. God, your character is all I need. God, and then sometimes we'll pray and we want our plans. You know, God, give me this. And God, God, take care of this. God, I, I know you love me. And God, I know you're going to help me in this area of my life. Maybe it's someone that's sick. Maybe it's someone that, that, that money. I don't know what it is. But a lot of times when we get on our knees, we want our plan and not his. I'm here to tell you, folks, it never, ever will work that way. It's always his plan. His plan. Not our plan, His character, not ours. His will, not ours. Boy, it's hard sometimes, isn't it? I know. It's hard sometimes just to... His will. Sometimes His will is just so hard. And that's what His will works. Now, I'm going to stop right here. His will. His will is so hard sometimes. But listen... If we're in prayer, if we're in tune with Him, after it all is done, listen, we will see His will was the right way. How many of you know this morning He's never been wrong? He'll never be wrong. His will is the right way. His will. You know, hallowed comes from an archaic English word which means... Listen, it means to make holy. It means to translate it holy, saint, sanctification, 
uh, sanctify. That's what it comes from, that word hallowed. In other words, when we pray, His name is above all names. Do you pray that way? Is His name in your life above all names? Because that's the way it should be in our lives when we pray. We're not done yet. We'll get done one day. Maybe next week. You be back. Because God has a lot more in how to build your faith through prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being with us. Forgive us of our sins. Lord, there may be someone here today and they just need to come and thank you for their prayer life and ask you to help them in their prayer life. I don't know what it is. There might be someone here this morning that's not saved. They don't know you. But they're ready to ask you through prayer, by faith, to come into their heart and save them. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you will work on that heart. I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you'll move in the lives of men and women and young folks. That they'll never be the same because they've heard your word today. God, I just pray right now that they'll come and give their heart to you. If you're here this morning and God has spoke to you about your prayer life, I'm not going to come back to you. I promise you, I will not embarrass you. But God has spoke to you about your prayer life this morning. And you want your prayer life to be more powerful. And God is wanting your prayer life more powerful. I want to pray for you right now. I will not come back to you, but I will.